Välkomna allihopa. Under helgen så har vi ett ganska tydligt vintertema och ett ganska tydligt skidtema här i Ljusgården. Så det är jag som representerar NK Sport och Fritid och NK Ski tillsammans med Switzerland Tourism som är här nere i Ljusgården under helgen. Och då kör vi något som heter NK Talks. Så jag står här och pratar med massor med spännande personer. Vi har gjort det sedan i torsdags men vi kommer göra det idag lördag och även imorgon söndag. Uh, so yeah, you're welcome now. And uh, right now I have the privilege to welcome Sam. So welcome, welcome to Stockholm, welcome to NK. Uh, super nice to, to have you here. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Yeah, yeah super, it's it's super excited. Um, so tell us a little bit more about yourself. What are you doing and, and where you're from and all that? Well, I'm actually coming from the bottom of this mountain, from Zermatt in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And I grew up there, so it was logically for me to to get into ski. Yeah, it's not a super big step, maybe. No, it was uh, always it's always a big step to get into it. But um, everybody. But I guess that a lot of your friends were doing it, and maybe your parents and. and yeah, all. you know, at at the age of three years, the the logical thing about playing in the snow was getting on on a sled or and having fun going down the mountain and. Yeah. That's how it evol evolves from skiing in front of the house to getting out to Alaska or even the Himalayas and yeah. ski some steep lines there. Yeah. Crazy. Well, okay, so this is more or less your back backyard then, th this mountain. So yeah. t tell us a little bit more uh, about the mountain and, and uh, I guess you've been up there at the top? Yeah, I've been up on the Matterhorn 51 times. Uh, 51 times. In summertime, I'm working as a mountain guide too, yeah. so it's a it, it's a combination of uh, my my passion to the mountain also, and just growing up there, it's it's logical that you want to climb it. You want to stand one day on that peak, don't you want to stand on that? Sure, if you but look I, on it? I'm not sure that I I am capable of going there, but. If I uh, if I if I um, yeah if I could I, I would love to to be on top sure yeah so if you train enough you can do that and for myself it was a it was a way of years just to get into climbing and skiing and now I'm I'm standing here and I can say I climbed it 51 times and of course Amazing. growing up on the bottom of it brings you a lot of knowledge to to do so but. What would you say, first of all, how old were you the first time you climbed it? I was uh, 18 when 18. I when I. And now you're, how old are you? I'm now 30, 30 years old. 30 years old. So you've been there 51 times during 12 years. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, I climbed it uh, several times on the Hernley Ridge, but then also with my brother <laughs> in the North Face, where we, we spent a night on the mountain, so sleeping at the at a place uh, 50 centimeters to one and one meter 20 yeah. and just sleeping on the wall like on the on the edge yeah yeah on a little edge and if you you're fixed but still if you drop something it's gonna end up down on the glacier so don't hope, move. hope uh, you, you didn't have any nightmares that night but then tell us uh, this this mountain looks pretty crazy is it even possible to ski this it is possible yeah and it has been done quite a lot Myself, I skied it, but uh, it looks different when you when you see it in May. You have way more snow on it, but it's still a steep, exposed mountain. So I skied it from the Salve Hut, from 4,000 4, meters. It's up here, just down down this face. And it's a, a crazy story. I spent the first first time. I spent uh, the night at the Hernley Hut when I was 18 years old. Okay. I didn't tell anybody of my family, and at the night my, my mom is calling me, hey Sam, where are you? Yeah. Dinner is ready. And I was like, ah, I cannot lie to my mother. So I told her, yeah, I'm at the Hernley Hut, tomorrow I want to ski down the Matterhorn. And she was just getting angry at me like, what the heck, you, you're going to come back home it's straight right now. Yeah. And I had to go back home. Okay, always, uh, always listen to your mother, right? Sometimes, yeah, it's better. <laughs> oh, but it's nice. But, but then also you're doing this crazy stuff, but you also kind of work together with the North Face. Tell us a little more about uh, that um, collaboration. Well, yeah, 
I'm, I'm a mountain athlete, uh, I'm also a, a mountain guide, so I want to have a, a support for outerwear that is uh, fitting to what I'm doing, that is providing me good material, if it's possible the best, yeah. but also that I can rely on, the, on the, just the, how they think, how, they, how they're producing their stuff, how they're uh, marketing, yeah. And I really found a good partner in North Face to collaborate in. Yeah, sounds good. But then, okay, so you're doing stuff with the North Face. Uh, so the latest thing you've done is uh, a three-part series. Right. Yeah. yeah. We were. Uh, it's it's every year uh, in April we we travel to Alaska. Yeah. Alaska, Alaska allows you to to ski just steeper terrain because of the snow is sticking to steeper faces also. Okay, it's, it's getting stuck on the face, yeah. Yeah, it's just that coastal snow that, that is coming with more moisture mm -hmm. and sticks more to the mountain. Okay. With a dry night, you, you don't have uh, a lot of avalanche danger, but you still have a lot of powder snow yeah. where you can Let's ski. get a, a sneak peek of the, of the series and the movies and we can talk about more, more about it. Yeah. Sure. mission to ride the remote spines known as corrugated. It's a truly unique face that you don't see anywhere in the world. I feel like we don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know if we can get there. I think we don't totally know what's in store for us. Corrugated is definitely something that is out there, but if you can ride this, you're one of the only persons in the world. So that was a sneak peek of, um, of what you've been doing the latest with, with the North Face. For me, it looks crazy, you know? Super, super steep. And as you, as you, as you mentioned, it's, it looks too steep to even get the snow stuck on the mountain. Right, yeah. But uh, it's, of, of course, for myself standing here, this is also looking like I, I'm getting excited again. Yeah, yeah, just a, but just in, a look. in that particular moment, we were training and just preparing, getting into the field for such a long time. It's, it's a whole process to get to, to ski a face like this. So how long is, is actually the, the preparation going, going before doing something like that? I mean, preparation for myself starts in September, yeah. October, November with training indoors. Even uh, I, I do CrossFit and that stuff just to get mentally and physically ready. And then it's a lot of skiing during the winter time, all the way till April. And in April we spent one month only to get one one round yeah. down that phase. Yeah. And it's a, it's a lot of uh, time investigated to have only one run. But uh, of course, that one run is is something I I remember yeah, as sure. the as the highest of skiing. And everything has to go right because if something goes wrong, it could be uh, it could be super super dangerous of course yeah it's it's clear you you can see that it's steep you can yeah. see that it's exposed so there is no margin for any for errors, no. any errors so everything the gear and everything has to be perfect the conditions have to be perfect yeah. and your mental strength has to be on top but talking about the risks what are the biggest risks we, we saw in the trailer you were setting off an avalanche for 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 example so the corners is yeah for example, in, in here you you have uh, problems with we had problems with cornices, yeah. but uh, no avalanches on the face. Okay. So cornices are actually 
really dangerous if you don't know where they are. But if you're roped up, you can yeah. you can break them down. And I was setting down a big a big yeah. cornice. It's oh, yeah. it's scary. Yeah. But we had we had yeah, a safety aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, of course, if you go off pace, if you go free riding, avalanches is something that that is uh, yeah a danger that is always there, and you need to have knowledge about it to to handle it right. And the best is to, to never get into an avalanche. But if you're in an avalanche, you need the right gear and the person, your, your people, to get out of it. So uh, we could see in the movie that you were, of course, wearing clothes from, from the North Face. So this is actually the, the gear you, you were, right? Yeah. So is. the, what is it, the free thinker uh, pants yeah. and jackets. Yeah. So and tell us what is, what are your expectations of the gear you're wearing? What what is the the capabilities of the clothes that is most most important? Well, most important is when you're out on a glacier for one month, you you don't have the, the margin of error. Yeah. So it means even if a zip is is getting trashed, yeah. your your trip is yeah. over. Everything has to work. Yeah. So if you don't have a, a jacket that works out there. You, yeah, you're gonna be cold or you stop the, the whole trip. Yeah. But then really important for myself is that I have all the pockets in the right position. Because it's, I spent more than, than eight weeks in this, in this clothing. Yeah. So I want to have everything organized yeah. and I know where I, I can have my, my gear, everything I need. So it's as much as it's important that it's okay, it's windproof, it's waterproof, but all the details are so important. That's why the jackets looks like they look like they, they do with the with the zips on, on the right places and all the pockets. So all the details are important, right? Of course, uh, style matters, but uh, it's uh, that, that's the thing that I don't really care about. I I think a jacket has to be warm, waterproof. That's that's the the basic thing. If it's not, then I throw it away or I give it away to, to anybody who can use it. But I need technical gear that is really re reliable in difficult conditions. And then the, there are a lot of uh, little details where you think, oh, maybe it's just style, but it's not. We are working a lot with designers to just talking about how a zip should close, yeah. that, that your stuff is not falling out. It's a, yeah, it's a, there is a big process behind that a lot of times you don't really see. Interesting, yeah. So for everyone who are more interested in, in the clothing from the North Face and, and uh, want to know more, we're going to stay here for, for a few minutes so you can come and ask questions. And uh, of course you can find the, the, the North Face Steep Series uh, ski wear on, on uh, Enkosport of Fritid on, on the second floor. So Sam, great to have you here. A big honor. You've you. been doing some uh, incredible stuff. And yeah, again, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting. <laughs>